Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy back with another video, and this one's going to be on animal evolution, and kind of just a brief introduction to how animals came about. Now, when we talk about an animal, they have some very unique characteristics. They are all multicellular. They're heterotrophic eukaryotes, which means they have their own nucleus and they eat other things. Uh, they get nutrition through ingestion, so they take in nutrients and they, they break them down inside their bodies. They do not have a cell wall, which by not having a cell wall, they have collagen that keeps their body held together, and this allows for better movement. Uh, they have a nervous and muscular tissue. They reproduce sexually um, through um, haploid cells that make diploid cells. They do not usually have, or they do not have, a haploid gametophyte that can survive on its own. No alternation of generation like the plants do. And the, the development goes from basically a zygote, a diploid cell, and it goes through a process of cleavage. Cleavage is when that one cell makes two. And then from there, the cells go through a process of mitosis where it makes a bunch of cells, a ball of cells, that is called a blastula. This blastula turns into a hollow ball, and it eventually becomes a gastrula around 30. It depends on the organism, but, you know, think about 30 cells or so to make this ball of cells. And then gastrulization occurs in which this ball folds inward and creates this kind of a C. And when you do, you have three layers form, and these three layers are going to form different things, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on. But you kind of need to know the order here, going from the zygote, which is the diploid organism, to cleavage, to blastula, gastrula, finally to the adult stage or whatever it is. And it's really easy to me always keep blastula and gastrula in order because the B comes before the G. Now, we talk about the phylogeny and diversity within animals. We've got the thing about their ancestor. They originated from a colonial flagellated, flagellated protist uh, a long, long time ago, of course. Now, there's several different branches that occur within the animal kingdom or within in the animal phylogeny. Uh, it can animal can either be a parazoa, which means it has no true tissue. Now, this is your periphera, this is your sponges, or it can be uh, eumetazoa, which means it has true nucleus. It's really easy for me to remember because you in eukaryotic means true, and here it means true. So this is true tissues. And you can see down here where it goes. When they break up into tissues, here is the non-tissue, the no tissue is this one, periphera only. All of these are the eumetazoa. Okay? Now, Next, you go into their body symmetry, either radiate or bilateral. So they have radial or bilateral symmetry. Now, think of it this way. Bilateral, we have it. We can be split right down the middle, and we have two equal halves. Uh, if you look down here at the bottom, this uh, crayfish or this lobster can be split in half, have two equal sides. The shovel can be split in half. Radial symmetry means it can be split more than one place to equal that two equal halves. I like to think of a starfish a lot of times can be split in more than one uh, region. But if you look over here on the, on the diagram, we have our radiates. That's these two lineages here, which are your Snedaria and um, Tinnaphora. Uh, and then the rest of these have bilateral. All right. Now, what bilateral allowed us to do is do a thing called cephalization. Cephalization is whenever you had um, the head becoming very important in which you had more uh, the, a larger brain, you have more neurons and nerves being centered into this um, head region. Another thing with phylogeny is a thing called gastrulization. I mentioned it earlier, but when you go from that diploid to that blastula to that gastrula, that gastrula is a ball of cells that actually folds inward. And what it does when it folds, it creates three layers. Now let me show you. Here's this layer one here. Layer two is kind of in the in the middle here, and layer three is the most inside. So you got these different layers that go down. Now the outside layer is called the ectoderm, which makes sense. Ecto means outside. Mesoderm is the middle middle layer, and endoderm is the inside layer. Now I like to think of it in in us, for example, our ectoderm was, is our skin, our mesoderm is like our muscle tissue, uh, and then our endoderm is like our uh, stomach, our internal organs. So, you know, it kind of gives you a rough idea of how what develops into what. Now, the next thing you have is the way body cavities are formed. You either have acolomates, 
colomates or pseudocolomates. The, the prefix a means without, so acolomates do not have a true colon or, or do not have a colon. Pseudocolomates means they have a false colon and colomates have a real colon. Now we need to know what a colon is. So let's look at the colomates first, which is over here on the right. A colomate means that you're going to have a, 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 an area here in which it's lined on both sides to make what we call a true gut. Okay. Um, the pseudocolomates, it still has lining, but it doesn't have any separation. All right, so it's not lined with meso mesoderm is not there, so the body cavity doesn't have that. And then the acolomate doesn't have, you know, uh, anything. It doesn't have any cavity at all. Now, as you go from acolomates to pseudocolomates to colomates, you get more and more complex. The next thing is animal phylogeny is either a protostome or a deuterostome. Now, if you remember that opening, here, here's that blast, I mean that gastrula I said, and here's the opening. If this opening here turns into the mouth, it's called a protostome. And if it turns into the anus, it's a deuterostome. And it's easy for me to remember, kind of a weird thing, but doo doo, anus, you know. So, Protostome is the opening develops into the mouth. The deuterostome, it develops into the anus. Um, and that's most of your chordates are deuterostomes, and you can see examples of protostomes. Now, I've got some terms in here. Cleavage. Protostomes have different cleavage than deuterostomes do. Um, colon formation is going to could be different. Protostomes have a certain way. Deuterostomes have a certain way. And then even their blastophorphate has different, different meaning, the mouth or the anus. Okay? So... That is some. That is just a little bit of that. Now, over the years, we have gone from making our phylogeny not simply on physical characteristics, but now on molecular basis, we deal with DNA. And there, there's some butting of heads into what phylogeny is. They all agree with the different groups of animals, but they don't agree for how they're put together. But here are some five things that they all agree on. Number one, all animals share the same common ancestor, the metazoa. Uh, sponges are basal animals. They have no true tissue. Uh, Eumatozoa is a clad of animals with true tissue. They're the true animals. Um, number four, most animal phyla belong to the clad bilateral or bi have bilateral symmetry. And chordates and some phyla belong to a clad deuterostoma. So, and we believe in this. All right, now this is just a chart to kind of summarize everything. I just want to show it to you. If you start out with your ancestral protus down here, multicellular, all of these all animals are multicellular, but if you look, the sponges are going to be the ones that have no true tissue, right? No tissue, and and the rest of these are going to have tissue. So tissues is a separate one. next one. These have bi either uh, radial symmetry or asymmetry. All the rest of them have bil bilateral symmetry. Then you go to your body cavities. These are going to have pseudo colons. All of these are going to have colons. Then you go on up, you've got segmentation start to occur, which makes the animals uh, more diverse. Um, you have endoskeletons, they actually have skeletons on the inside of their body and eventually have a backbone, which is chordata. So that's just kind of animal evolution in a nutshell, and I hope that helps you a little bit, and I will talk to you soon.